Okay, so this is going to be the OSCE for the management of a cord prolapse. So Mandy, welcome to your OSCE test station. I'm going to read a scenario out to you and I need to make sure you've understood it. So if you need to repeat it back to me, that's fine. Okay. Ready? Yes. Thank We've got you. 10 minutes on the clock and we'll start when you're ready. Okay. So the scenario is, Paula is a Gravida 4, Para 3. She's admitted to the hospital at, at the labour ward at term and she's accompanied by her partner, Chris. She's had back aches and mild contractions, 2 in 10. Okay. The midwife assessment reveals that the fetal head is 4 fifths palpable above the pelvic brim. Shortly after admission, Paula has spontaneous rupture of membranes and the umpilical cord is now visible outside the vagina. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so this emergency then is a cord prolapse. First thing I'm going to do then um, is to call for help. Okay, um, so um, cord prolapse is an uh, obstetric emergency, so I'm going to need to call for my soaps. So I'm going to need a senior midwife, so the midwife coordinator, so that I can inform her and she can help coordinate what's happening. I need a senior obstetrician, um, so again, that they can um, help with the management of the emergency. We're going to need a senior anaesthetist. Um, the reason we need an anaesthetist then is um, a, possibly we're going to need some pain relief. We're also, though, potentially going to need to transfer to theatre. So for this, um, the anaesthetist needs to be aware so that they can alert the theatre team as well. We're also going to need to consider having IV access. So whilst we get IV access, then we would also need to um, ensure that we take blood. So we'd need an FVC, a group and save, and um, so that we can prepare that for theatre possibly going to need an antacid as well, so that, um, again, in case of an emergency caesarean. The other people I'm going to need then is a paediatrician. Um, I'm going to be anticipating neonatal resuscitation, so I need to make sure that we have a resuscitator in the room and that is checked and it is switched on. I'm also going to need extra people to help manage the situation and I'm going to need a scribe so that we can ensure that we have proper records and um, documentation of the events. Once I've called for my help, I need to um, determine the fetal well-being. Okay, so I'm going to need to listen into the fetal heart because depending on what the fetal heart is doing, will um, may, may be a um, sort of an indicator for the management of the um, situation. I need to make sure first of all that there is a fetal heart, um, and then also consider um, ongoing fetal monitoring as well. So with CTG. Once I've done that, then we need to um, decide on um, the appropriate delivery. So I'm going to need to do a vaginal examination. The reason I'm doing a vaginal examination is to first of all determine um, what the cervix dilatation is. If um, the cervix is fully dilated, it may be more appropriate to um, do a vaginal delivery, um, but that will also depend on the um, descent of the fetal head, so the station of the head. You've mentioned that this is four-fifths palpable, so that could indicate that this head may be still quite high at this stage, so it may not be appropriate to do a vaginal um, delivery. Um, if, if it is suitable for vaginal delivery, we may need to expediate that by considering a instrumental delivery as well, so we'd need the appropriate um, equipment in the room to be able to facilitate that. Um, other considerations that we need to make at that point, though, is um, relieving pressure off the cord as well. So by doing a vaginal examination, I can actually push the head up off the cord to relieve the pressure. Um, other considerations I can make there really could be to um, change maternal position. That would relieve pressure off the cord as well. So I would get mum to roll over onto all fours and to um, adopt a knee chest position um, so that um, gravity would help um, free the cord. And also I could consider an exaggerated sims where she'd be in a left lateral position but we'd need to wedge mum as well. The other thing I can consider is a um, bladder fill-in as well. So again, if the head is still quite high at this point, then we can consider filling the bladder to relieve that pressure off the cord while we determine our mode of delivery. If we've decided then that we can't um, 
deliver vaginally, we're going to need to transfer straight to theatre. So we've already alerted the theatre team um, and we're going to need to deliver the baby by cesarean section. So whilst we're, deliver whilst we're transferring to theatre, it may be necessary that the midwife needs to keep the pressure off the cord. So we have to consider um, the position of the midwife whilst we're going to theatre. So we need to think about her sort of posture and also the position of her hand as we're moving um, to, to theatre. We also need to consider at that point maternal dignity as well. So we need to try and keep mum covered up um, whilst we move her to theatre. Once this baby is delivered, we would anticipate this baby may need some resuscitation. So um, we'd also need, though, to take cord gases um, so to test what the pHs are to see whether this baby has been compromised. Following that, um, we then need to obviously ensure that we have a um, effective chain of command. Okay, we need to be um, calm and assertive. We also have to have effective communication with the multidisciplinary team and also with the coordinator. Other considerations we need to consider then would be um, consent. We'd need to be communicating to mum what's actually going to be happening. Um, we'd also need to consider ethical considerations as well. So psychological trauma of this happening, but also things obviously like dignity. Also, we need to think about what would happen if there was no fetal heart. So that would be a big ethical consideration as well. We'd need to debrief um, mum and her partner afterwards, so we'd need to do a um, duty of candor. We would also need to um, put in a incident form, so we would need to complete a DATEX form um, for, for risk, and we'd also need to consider um, debriefing the, anybody involved in the incident, so either with a supervisor of midwives or a professional midwifery advocate. The final thing we also need to consider is sort of um, health and safety, so making sure that we haven't got sort of lots of equipment in the room where anybody could injure themselves. Um, and we also need to just make sure afterwards that everything is documented effectively um, and that everything is transferred into the notes as soon after the event as possible. And I think that's everything. You've not mentioned any um, prompts, so I would assume that I have mentioned everything that I need to. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the end of your OSCE test. Thank you.